Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipstromstudios.co.uk and in this video in our Studio 1.6 series we are going to be checking out the video track features which are already pretty magnificent. Now it's been pretty cool that over the last several years with Studio 1 we have had a video player which is great but now we can go one better than that. We actually have a dedicated video track and you can do some uh, basic video editing and you can export the video as you could before but in this uh, new updated version of the video uh, features in Studio One when you export if you have multiple videos on the uh, video track you have um, a few more exporting options so you can either export the whole thing uh, so all of those clips get rendered into one video or you can export the individual clips that are on the uh, video track itself. So let's get into this. So I've got, um, as you can see, a whole array of videos here. I'm going to grab this one here just because it's fun. Uh, and we're heading in towards winter, so, you know, why not snow? Why not? Let's just drag this in. And you just drag it into the song. And as you can see, it's created the video track. It's opened the video track, which is available from the uh, global visibility dialog box here as well. So you just click on this guy and select video. Um, and that shows and also hides the video track. It does not show and hide the video player, however. The video player um, can be adjusted in size and everything there and it automatically mutes the audio by default uh, because uh, you can unmute it and mute it from the audio track that is created for the video itself. And as you can see, we have thumbnails and uh, we, diff we as you can see from the thumbnails, they have different values. So the first one here is zero and then um, Let's see what that number is, 186, then 374. And those, I think, are frames or something like that. I think that's what those are. It's number of frames from this bit to this bit to this bit. I think that's how that works. And so we can do some basic editing. Uh, we can split at any point like this. And we can move like that. We can move that back. We can... Um, cut out a section. So let's say we cut this out here and we just hit the delete key. With ripple edit on, it will just close up that gap. So now it should play. Now, there are no fades as yet available. So you can't do cross fades from one to the next. As you can see, it just jumps. Now, um, the audio for this video, by the way, um, when I shot this video, my TV was playing in the background, which is what you can hear. Um, so if I want to undo that, I just control Z and control Z again, and it should be back to normal. And I shot this from our um, upstairs front bedroom on my cell phone. Uh, not bad quality, actually, for that kind of thing. Um, but one of the things we can do here is um, I'm just going to control Z one more time. There we go. So that everything is resolved back to normal. And what we can do is we can select this and we can just press D. And it will duplicate the video. And that gives us more um, videos on the clip. And then what we can do, let's say we're we're happy with this. We're not obviously because it's just one simple video with really rubbish audio but let's say we're happy with this um we can go to song export video and in this case here we've got an option for all videos or you can choose which video you want now in this case it's a duplication of the two of the one video. So the same video appears twice. But if you had like uh, three or four different videos here, you'd have those titles there. And so you could select either the one or the other. And then um, the thing is, is that any subsequent videos after your first one that are added to the video track, 
when you do this export, they will export at the format that the first video was um, was in. So whatever that format is and whatever that frame rate is, that will govern everything else that goes on this video track um, when you export. Okay, so I hope that you understand that part. It's important to get that. Now, there's so, there are some video options. If we go into Studio One, Options, Advanced, and then Video, this one is a really important one. Set song frame rate to video frame rate when importing video file. With this checked, and you hit Apply, anytime you import a video, it will automatically be set to um, the song and the frame rate, the song frame rate and the video frame rate matching so that they are identical. And this will prevent all kinds of issues um, going forward when you really get into um, adding music and different clips and everything else. Um, if the frame rates don't match, then you'll start getting some sync issues. So it's important that you have both set. Now you can manually do that, or you can do that with this checkbox selected. The other one here is automatically uh, create audio track for sound from the video. So it will pull the video's audio, if there is any, directly onto uh, an audio track. So with this check, you just hit apply, then you hit OK. Um, and then if we was to remove this video and bring in another video, then um, you would see that uh, it would it would do that. So let's delete that video. Let's delete all of that. And uh, let's close the video track. And let's bring in something else. Uh, let's see what else do we have that I could actually use. Um, how about this one? Let's drag this guy in. And there we go. And this has brought in the audio. Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylitchfromstudios.co.uk and in today's video we're going to look at the input filter as part of our note effects series. And so this is a video that I made for my note effects series as stated there in the intro. Um, and so it created the uh, the audio track automatically. Now, if I wanted to overdub this with and replace this voice because I didn't like the voice track, then I can mute that and just put in another audio track. Or I can put a music bed underneath this, whatever I wanted to do, and then I can export the video, kind of much like we could before. Um, but it's just really handy now that we've got all of this um, thumbnail track here so we can see exactly where we are in the video at any particular point in, in the song as we're adding uh, bits and pieces to it as we go. So there you go. That is pretty much the um, video features in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful and helpful. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like the video and you also want to see um, all the new content that I've got coming up for Studio One Six, including further videos. And also I'm going to be doing uh, some live streams over the coming weeks so that uh, we can go in even more depth over um, some of these brand new features for Studio One Six. And also you'll get your chance to ask me questions that you might have about features and functionality of Studio One Six. So um, please do get yourself along to those. Hit the notification bell once you've subscribed to the channel and select all notifications. That way you are not going to miss a thing of any of my Studio One Six content that is going to be coming in the next few days and weeks and on. So thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.